This is such a stupid video. Probably getting in over my head here, but let's take a crack at this anyways. Much like you guys, I was once a fan of H3H3. I mean, back in the day, it was kind of hard not to be. The videos were funny, they acted as a voice of reason, Ethan and Ela were both very relatable as people. It was good content. And look, you guys already know the story, there's no reason for me to go into great detail about what happened next. They started a podcast, the higher levels of exposure to Ethan's personality turned off a lot of the old fans, and they've since gone on to say and do things that many people find, dare I say, Cringe? Ooh. Ooh. There it is, the history of H3H3 summed up into one sentence. We don't need a 40 minute video to go over it, even though I'd love to milk Ethan's popularity for some of that sweet, sweet yeah. ad revenue. Now personally, I slowly stopped watching H3 sometime around 2020 because I lost interest in the content and I didn't really find value in Ethan's contributions to the topics I was invested in. Which I guess means you could say I was one of the people who found him cringe. But recently, thanks to a certain popular streamer whose name rhymes with incestiny, I was reintroduced to the podcast, specifically through a series of clips where Destiny was reacting to Ethan arguing with his chat and employees about socialism versus social democracy. But how is being anti-capitalist not radical? Just in theory. Because how, like... Because the United States isn't the whole world, dude. Like... What country is not... I mean, I'm... Now, to make something clear, I don't think Ethan is based just because he's pushing back against socialism. I have my political beliefs, and they're mostly grounded in zero research, which is why I don't get into them very often. But truthfully, I really don't give a f what Ethan believes, as long as it's not harming anyone. And I'm definitely not trying to say that Ethan is going conservative either, because he's not, and going in that direction politically would not make him any more or less based. But what I really like about these clips was that Ethan was willing to stand his ground and be principled, even if it meant upsetting his own fan base. And that can be really hard to do when you're as famous as Ethan Klein is. I've seen a lot of people online who seem to think that if they were in his position, they'd be freely speaking their minds and saying whatever the f they want all day. But that's just not how it works at all. The reality is that most people in this world have no idea what it's like to have that many eyes on them at all times, myself included. You might think ignoring it is as easy as just not looking at your phone, but that's because you're stupid. I'm telling you, just knowing that at any given moment there's that much criticism being leveled at you will get your anxiety rising, I promise you. So on that alone, I already respect that Ethan is willing to stand his ground. But the thing about Ethan is that as he's gotten more political over the years and involved himself with super friendly nice guy Hassan Piker. You f***ing baying pig! You f***ing bloodthirsty violent pig dog! Suck my dick! His fan base has gotten more political and, uh, you know, extreme. So any engagement he has with them that doesn't align with their pre-existing worldviews is probably gonna piss them off. And since they're such a lovely bunch, holding his principles means that Ethan is knowingly subjecting himself to some serious amounts of hate. Now getting online hate aside, pushing back is extra scary for Ethan because his income is pretty much dependent on the success of the H3 podcast. I mean, I guess they have Teddy Fresh and hopefully some other investments too. But the podcast, I'm guessing, is probably a pretty important part of their finances. Yet in spite of all of that, Ethan has made the choice to stay true to his values instead of pandering to an audience that, let's be real, probably just wants him to regurgitate a bunch of talking points. And that is pretty f***ing based if you ask me. Plus he quit Twitter, which is just always a good thing in my book. So ever since then, I've slowly started tuning into the podcast again to see if Ethan has changed as a person over the last few years. And what I notice is that Ethan is a complex human being just like everyone else on the planet, including the members of his audience that I just pigeonholed, and that the notion of me deciding whether or not Ethan is based again or that it matters at all is actually really f stupid. There's a reason why that Shane Dawson video I made only critiques his content and not Shane as a person. And that's because I don't know Shane as a person just like I don't know Ethan. I just know his content. His podcast self is not him. Oh, you think that because it's not super edited and we get to see his ugly side sometimes that that means you're seeing through the cracks in the veneer? No, just like everyone else, he's a multi-dimensional person who, yes, has ugly sides, but also many other sides. And a podcast is still content at the end of the day. You're still seeing a version of his personality that is catered to the cameras and audiences. Even just a minute ago, when I said that defending his values was based means absolutely f nothing. He could easily be the sh person behind closed doors or the best person and I would never know. The truth is that I never really had any intention to dissect Ethan as a person in this video. I just wanted to lead you on and see if I could get away with rambling about the meta of YouTube commentary. And now I'm rambling about the meta of this exact video as it's happening. In fact, you are now looking at the script for the video as I type it out and narrate it. We are caught up to the present moment. There is nowhere to go from here. The future exists as nothing but infinite potential from where we are now. Isn't that just the nature of this universe anyways? In 
infinite potential in the present moment? Limitations of the third dimension? Everything simultaneously important yet meaningless? So yeah, Ethan Klein did something I liked.